Hi. This might well have been the talk of the town back in 550 BC, where Pythagoras, a Greek mathematician, discovered a fantastic rule known as his theorem, where if he knew the lengths of any two sides of a right angle triangle, he was able to calculate the missing side without drawing it or measuring it. Now this was one mega discovery at the time. So how useful do you think this would be to us? I mean, suppose you had a building where you needed to know the length of a wire that runs under the floorboards from one socket in one corner of the building to a socket in the other. It could be hard to measure the length due to obstructions in the way, such as walls and furniture. According to Pythagoras, all we need to do is measure the other two sides. In this case, the outer walls. And let's suppose they were 8 meters and 6 meters. Then we could draw a right angle triangle and calculate this according to his theorem. OK, so what is his theorem? What's this magic rule I hear you say? Well, before I tell you his great discovery, I want you to do something. What I want you to do is to draw this triangle to scale, say one centimeter being equivalent to one meter. So this side would be six centimeters and this side would be eight centimeters. And then just measure this distance and convert it back to meters. So pause the video whilst you draw this and come back when you've completed it. Then I will show you how Pythagoras does it without even drawing the triangle to scale. OK, welcome back if you had a go at finding this length. So what did you make it? Well, let's just see what Pythagoras would have made it first of all. Now, he would have drawn his right angle triangle and he labelled the side opposite the right angle, this side here, with an H. H because he called it the hypotenuse. It's the longest side of a right angle triangle and you should have found that too in your measurement. You should have found that this was longer than the 6 metres and the 8 metres. So he decided to call these two sides the two shorter sides and I've labelled them A and B. Now Pythagoras drew squares on the sides of the triangles and discovered a connection between their areas. He found that the area of this square on the longest side was equal to this area plus this area. Now you should know that the area of a square is given by multiplying the two sides together. So the area of the square on the hypotenuse would be h squared and this is equal to the areas of these two squares added together a squared in other words and b squared or as an equation h squared equals a squared plus b squared and we can summarize this up by saying that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides the sum being to add the squares of the two shorter sides. And so we have Pythagoras' theorem. So returning back to the building problem here, we can find the distance from one corner to the other by using this theorem. This side we know is the hypotenuse and we can label it h. And by the theorem we've got that h squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two shorter sides. So that would be 8 squared plus 6 squared. Or you could write 6 squared plus 8 squared. It's not going to matter which way round you do this. So what is 8 squared? Well that's 8 eighths, 64, plus 6 sixes, 36, and that comes to 100. So to find h, all we need to do is to square root 100. And that is this symbol which you'll find on most calculators and we need to then square root 100. 
So we're looking for a number that when squared gives us 100. And if you're not sure of it, you can just do it as I say on a calculator and you'll come up with 10. Although we should know that 10 times 10 is 100. And we mustn't forget the units. The units will be meters. So how does this compare with what you got? Did you get 10 meters when you drew the triangle to scale? Well, hopefully you can see how useful this is. It's quick, very quick compared to drawing to scale and it's accurate. So it's got to be thumbs up for Pythagoras' theorem. Now you can use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the hypotenuse but you can also use it to calculate a shorter side if you know the lengths of the other two. How? Well suppose we had a solid cone and what we wanted to do was to find the height. I can't stick a ruler through here because it's solid. But what I can do is I can measure the radius, which let's say is 4 centimeters, and the slant height, which is 9 centimeters, say. And I've got myself a right angle triangle. Now I know from Pythagoras' theorem, the hypotenuse, that's this side here, the 9 centimetres, because it's opposite the right angle, that 9 squared would equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. That would be x squared plus 4 squared. Now, being an equation, I can rearrange this for x squared. I can subtract 4 squared from both sides. So I would get that, therefore, x squared equals 9 squared minus 4 squared. And you can see that this follows the rule here because we've got that the area of this square on the hypotenuse minus the area of this square on the shorter side gives us the area of this square, x squared in this case. So, you can go to this equation if you're finding a shorter side, some people do, rather than doing this, but be very careful that you do the hypotenuse squared minus the square of the other shorter side, okay? Anyway, so all we do is just carry on as before, 9 squared, 9 nines, 81, minus 4 squared, which is 16. 81 minus 16 comes to 65. And so therefore, if we want to get x, we need to find the square root of 65. This is not an obvious one like the square root of 100 was, so we definitely need to use our calculator here. And if you square root 65, you get 8.062 and so on. And if we round this, say, to one decimal place, this is going to be 8.1 centimeters to one decimal place. Don't forget that accuracy on the end here. Okay, so it's given us the height of our cone. So basically, that's all there is to Pythagoras' theorem. If you're finding the hypotenuse, make sure you add. If you're finding a shorter side, make sure that when you get to this stage, you're subtracting. And always check your answer. Check your answer. Check that this side turns out to be shorter than the hypotenuse. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial on Pythagoras' theorem.